Air loop lacing is the most popular option, but it has a significant drawback as it can't be used for strong corset tightening. Nevertheless, such lacing is the leader in wedding and evening gowns and it remains the favorite decorative element. That is why such lacing should be done carefully, firmly, and beautifully. Watch the video. Air loops for a corset lacing are made only from non-stretchable cords or ribbons. It is strictly forbidden to use different types of rubber bands. I will use a ready-made silk cord with a diameter of 3 or 4 millimeters. There is a huge variety of shapes and sizes of air loops, so there is the same variety of ways to mark and sew them. I show different types of loops and how to make them in my courses, but now I will show one of the simplest and most popular methods to save time. Now let's sew removable plackets for air loop lacing. You will need to cut two strips of duplicated fabric for one placket. The strip width is determined by the width of the bones, which you will attach to strengthen the placket. I will use a 1.2 cm wide wriggling bone. So let's calculate the width of the strip. Two parallel wriggling bones will be about 2.5 cm. You need to consider two allowances for each side. This is another 2.5 cm. In total, the width of the strip is 5 cm. We need to determine the size of the loops to calculate the strip length. Let's assume that the loop spacing is 3.5 cm. The loops will be placed tightly. I plan to have five loops. They will be 17.5 centimeters. We need to add one centimeter on the top and bottom, so it will make 19.5 centimeters. We also need to add 2.5 centimeters for seam allowance. In total, it is 22 centimeters. I cut two 5 cm wide and 22 cm long strips for one placket. It is necessary to cut a pair of similar strips for the second placket. I make a stay stitching line along the longer cut of one strip. I attach the first wriggling bone in one millimeter from the stay stitching line. I leave 1.5 centimeters on top and bottom. I stitch the second parallel wriggling bone. I mark the position of the loops. I turn the strip face up. I measure 2.2 centimeters on one side of the strip, 1.2 centimeters for seam allowances, and one centimeter distance from the edge of the placket. Move the pantograph apart and make five more marks. I insert pins in the marks. A pin is pierced on the bone edge and it exits on seam allowance. I wind around the pins with the cord. Wind the cords in opposite direction when you mark the loops on the second symmetrical placket. 
I fix the loops with a stitching line in one millimeter from the stay stitching line toward seam allowance. Now I remove pins, distribute and level the loops, and carefully make an additional line. I place the second strip on top and align the cuts. I turn it over and make a machine stitching line over the stay stitching line. I make a joining line along the shorter cut and close the placket on top. I turn the corner out. I make a stay stitching line on the bottom. I cut the corner of seam allowance. I fold and stitch seam allowance with an additional line. I fold the placket, straighten the loops, and stitch over the lines which we made to attach regaline bones. We have two tunnels where we insert plastic bones. You can hand stitch the bottom of the placket after. Now the open seam allowance can be serged, zigzagged, or finished with a pencil edge from bias tape. The first placket is ready. Make the second symmetrical placket. I have introduced three main types of lacing. We have analyzed the pros and cons of each of them, and your choice in favor of one or another option will solely depend on the needs of a client. Go for grommets if it is necessary to tighten for more than five centimeters. You should opt to use metal loops if you need lacing with a slight tightening on a thin cord. Well, if there is no need to tighten at all, but you need a voluminous ribbon or scarf lacing, you need to choose air loops, of course. Good luck and see you in the next video.